Oh, they're my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is this may end up being a short video. It's just something important that I wanted to put out. And for all them that fall on this video, whether you're a believer or not, do not cry for me. Do not cry for us. When I mean what I mean when I say this is when an individual gives their life over to Christ, they have given up on much. But this is a decision that one has to make. In order to seek the kingdom. Jesus said it clearly himself. Anyone that wants to come after me. Must deny themselves. Take up the cross. And follow after him. These men and women. Are not to be pitied. And you will know why by the end of this video. In order for us to enter the kingdom, we must suffer. Whether you suffer by persecution, whether you suffer by trials upon the earth, whether you suffer by... Um, being delivered from your sins. For one could live a sinful life, then give their life over to the Lord. Through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will be flushing your sins out. Is it easy? It's not easy. It's the same as a drug addict overcoming their addiction. It's a suffering. It's a flesh fighting now with the spirit. The spirit seeking to subdue the flesh in obedience to Jesus Christ. Christians have always been suffering. God told us we would suffer. No need to pity. This is something that one has to go through. I say this because of the increase of persecution that is going on throughout all parts of the world. And trust me, it's coming to the US, okay? <laughs> The Lord says, anyone that wants to reign with him, they must suffer with him. For when he was on earth, he suffered many things. He suffered. He bore our sins upon his shoulder. He was scoffed and mocked at. He was betrayed by his own disciples. They sought to kill him before his own time. He came amongst his own people and they rejected him. He was kicked, he was flogged, he was spat on, he was punched. His beard was pulled. He hung on the cross, nails in his hands and his feet. A spear was pierced through his side. He died a slow, agony, death. Beaten so badly to where it was written, if you had seen him, you would not have known if that was a human before your face. You have to imagine that. 
you would have not known if he stood before you after seeing what the people on earth had done to him you would have not known you would not you would not have been able to distinguish his eyes from his nose or his mouth beaten that bad suffered for our sake for the sake of the kingdom for the sake of the truth Likewise, we are his body. Likewise, it is said we shall suffer. Likewise, we are suffering. As the body, me here in this world, I don't, I'm not suffering as my brothers and sisters in Christ that are in the Middle East. For in the Middle East, many Christians cannot leave their home. There's like a warrant out for their arrest to be killed, to be slaughtered, to be raped, to be beheaded, to be sawed asunder, to be burnt, to be boiled for the sake of the gospel. All for the sake of the gospel. But do not pity us. Do not pity the body. The body has to go through these things. This is known as trials. This is known as testing. For after this, we're free. What more can the people on this earth do to us after we die? As it is written in scriptures, and I believe when a preacher or a pastor preaches to his congregation, they should say these things. For men seek the Lord. Men and women seek to be quote unquote Christians coming out of the world without without realizing it's not easy. Jesus said himself, count the cost. Even the Lord himself does not want you to rush to him that quickly. He wants you to think about it. Count the cost before you come to me. What goes on as far as being a Christian? What you will suffer? What you must do? What you must deny, what you can keep, what you cannot keep. In the beginning of my walk, it wasn't easy. In the beginning of my walk, the Lord knew it wasn't easy. I confessed to him in the beginning of my walk, I never cried so much in sin than I do now. In the spirit, forever mourning for the people of the world. forever mourning because the flesh is seeking to battle against the spirit, but the spirit is seeking to subdue. There's always a fighting that's going on. You don't have to be in the Middle East to be persecuted, to say, oh, you're a persecuted Christian, you're the true Christians. If you live in America and you still have that fiery, strong faith of, for God, that's tribulation. To still hold on to your faith. For we know America is like a Sodom. And to live here. And to still hold on to Jesus. To truly be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every day you see sin. Everywhere you hear it and you see it, you have to sometimes run away from it because it's too much. You have to have the Holy Spirit to subdue you. But as the persecution is spreading, you hear many activists that stand up and seek justice for the persecution of saints.
Vindication comes from God. I don't seek it from men. So when I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray that the Lord may give them strength through their persecution. And this is, this is what we must pray to. In tribulation, I pray that the Lord may give me strength through it. But these trials, these persecutions are good for us. Trials for us. This tests us. It tests our patience in the Lord. It tests our endurance in the Lord, in which he said we shall have. Long suffer, patience, kindness, rejoicing in truth. Through it all, Jesus, prime example, patience, long suffering, through it all, overcoming this world. And therefore, he said to us, you need to do the same, and I will help you. You shall have tribulation. He told you that from the beginning. You shall have tribulation, but fear not, I have overcome it. So therefore, if he has overcome it, I rely on him through my tribulation. We rely on him through persecution, not giving up. Don't cry for us, but cry for yourself. For them that have not taken up their cross, truly. They have not denied themselves, truly. That are not following after Jesus Christ, truly. Don't cry for us in persecution, but cry for yourself. But when, the, when persecution does hit the fan in America, you will see for them that truly hold on to Jesus Christ and you have given the spiritual eyes to see and the ears to understand. Many of those that are within the church, when persecution does hit the fan as, as it is in the Middle East, Many will drop out. Why? Because they have not sat down to, call, to count the cost of what it takes to follow Jesus Christ. I want you to hold on to that. As the Lord said, and I'm going to let you go. As he was on his way to be crucified, carrying his cross, there were some women a group of women mourning for him. Understand the situation of what he was going through. Already in agony. On his way to die. Not only to die, but to suffer in his death. Women, along, women alongside of him mourning because of this but they were not truly mourning for he, he knew their hearts he said unto them let me see if I can find that verse one second okay I couldn't find the verse but I'm going to put it down in my video if I remember it but I'm going to summarize I just don't have it word for word <clears throat> I want to summarize. As Jesus is on his way to the cross, there was women lamenting for him, okay? But they were not sincere because he's seen it through their hearts. And they were not his true followers because he would not have said this to his true followers. After reading it, I realized that. These women cried for him and he looked at them and he said to them, do not cry for me. Okay. He looked at them and says, don't cry for me. Cry for yourself and for your children. For the time shall come when they shall say, blessed are the women that never bore children. Blessed are those same women that never breastfed. 
basically blessed is blessed is all women that never gave that never had children. Why? Because those children at that time were suffering. Then he said unto them, See what they do to a live tree. Imagine what they will do to a dry tree. So this living tree, he spoke about himself, saying, they persecute me and I'm the truth. I'm the living water. I'm the living tree. Yet they persecuted me. This is what they're doing to our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout parts of the world. As Jesus has said to these women that lament, I say too, do not cry for them. Do not cry for us. When my time of persecution comes, don't cry for me. But cry for yourself. The dry tree, the tree that does not have the spirit of God, the tree that the tree that continues to remain in lukewarmness. Cry for yourself. For after the saints have been persecuted, what else do you have to suffer? Nothing. For you will be with the Father, but the lukewarm and the world that rejects the truth, your suffering will be even greater. But Jesus continues and says as he was speaking to the women, he said that they shall come when they will say, fall on us. They will cry out to the rocks and the mountains, fall on us and hide us. And we know that goes back into the book of Revelation. In which after the suffering of the saints have been fulfilled. After the number in which God is waiting for of Christians, of saints. After that number of mortars have been fulfilled, the Lord will punish the world. And with the Lord punishing the world, he will also punish the lukewarm. So though the lukewarm may face persecution, the judgment of God still sits upon you. So cry not for us. For this is our hell. But cry for yourself. Not only will this be your hell, but there's more to come. There's a lot in which the Bible speaks, in which Christ speaks, that men and women of the faith despise. I realized as I continued to read scriptures that Jesus didn't care if you were offended of what he said. Because the thing is, in actuality, why should he care? He created the earth. The Father created the earth through his Son. We have to ask ourselves, who are we? And where were we when he laid the foundations of the earth? When he stretched forth the skies with his power, his strength, his wisdom, and his understanding. When he called forth the sun to blaze, and it still blazes to this day, and the moon and the waters created every creature in the sky, on land and in sea, and even us, through him, we live and move and breathe. Who are we to despise what he says? He doesn't care. For what he does, he speaks the truth. Seeking to save your life with his truth. 
And with that, you either accept it or you deny it. Don't cry for the saints. Don't seek justice for the saints. For Jehovah is our vindicator. Let me read this verse, <clears throat> which I forgot to read for the people that pray for to stop the killing of saints are basically not helping the kingdom or harming the kingdom. Okay, let me find this really quick so I can go over it with you. For you have to understand this was the revelation I was given a while back. And all I can say is, wow, this is wonderful. I want you to know that in the book of Revelation, it also clarifies in the book of Daniel. That the persecution of Christians will continue until God reaches a number. We don't know what that number is. There's a number that it that is to be persecuted before the judgment of God falls upon this whole earth. Underneath the fifth seal in the book of Revelation, it is said, let me see if I can find it. It says, when he opened the fifth seal, John said, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Okay? And it continues, it says, they cried with a loud voice, these souls, they cried with a loud voice, saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, doeth thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth okay so the souls underneath the altar are asking god for vindication they are asking when will you stop the persecution of saints of christians about the whole earth it's god's time not mankind Mankind can't and won't stop it. And if one seeks to stop it here on earth, you're only hindering the kingdom. You're only hindering God's judgment upon the earth. Okay? The answer was given unto them. For they said, how long? And it is said, white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said to them that they should rest yet for a little season for god is basically saying not yet okay not yet and then he says until so they ask when will you vindicate our blood the lord says not yet give it a little season i need more time there needs to be more time on earth not until your fellow servants and also your brothers and sisters in Christ be killed as you were should be fulfilled. Not yet. So the people on earth are crying. The souls are crying. Don't pity. Let it happen. God's vengeance will not come upon the earth, not until a number is fulfilled. Then he will say, that's enough. The, pers the persecution of Christians will continue, will spread, and will come to the U.S. But this is our time of testing a time of tribulation for the saints but then after that the tribulation of the world shall come when the number has been fulfilled 
Pray always that when your time comes, that you may be able to endure it all, even unto death, even unto torture. For I know it is coming here. We have our saints, brothers and sisters that have been having dreams for years now. The Lord is even revealing unto children persecution here in America. It's one video I fell on where um, a teacher's daughter, young girl, she probably was about eight, the Lord showed her a dream where she seen her father and her mother, their heads were cut off because of their faith. This is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. For all of them that die in Christ is being added to the number to be fulfilled. Basically, the jar is not full yet. Or the scale is not full yet. What number, like I say, I don't know. But whatever the number the Lord is seeking, I pray that it hastens. Don't cry for us in suffering. Don't pity the church. Don't pity the body. For this is a great reward. But pity yourself. Cry for yourself. If you too still sit in lukewarmness. I'll take care.